Well, modern day modern day wicket keeping is um, is something that is focused more, I think, on the balance of the team. Wicket keepers now you would you'll very rarely, if ever, find a specialist wicket keeper. They all have to bat, and especially in the limited over uh, version of the game, it's very very important to have that to have that balance to have someone coming in the middle who can turn a game around. So I think the, the, the wicket keeper is probably more important in the limited over um, form of the game, more important for his batting than anything else. Well, it was a, it was a, a, a new experience for me. And when I started out, I really didn't have that kind of experience to keep against real, real fast bowling and so much of it but as over time you know i, I had to to learn and and to adapt my techniques to become a lot more effective and i think i managed to do that well when you get up to this type of speed that these guys used to bowl at uh one or two miles an hour didn't re really make a whole lot of difference but um i would say that in the fastest bowling that I, I kept to in my time would have been on two occasions to Patrick Patterson. I think he consistently was the quickest of, of the bowlers that I, I kept wicket to. And Holding? Michael Holding was also a very fast bowler. Uh, I, but I came into the team uh, maybe when he was like past his, his, his quickest. But uh, still, you know, it, as I say, you know, they were all up in a pace bracket that um, you know they 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 bowled at at express pace and um, I'll just say that Patrick Patterson was probably from time to time the quickest of of the lot. Well, it was actually it was actually quite quite funny. Um, I was keeping up to the wicket, which is one on one of the rare occasions that I would get a chance to keep up to the wicket, and um, Sonny was batting. And I noticed it was just before an interval. He'd, he'd gotten to he'd gotten to a hundred, and just before the interval, I, I noticed that the sound of his bat it sounded as if it was broken. So I said to him, "Sonny, that bat sounds like it's broken." He says, "Yes, I'm going to change it at at what's it? Can't remember if it was lunch or tea." He says, "Yeah, I think it was tea time." I says, "I'm going to change it." So I, I just out said to him, you know, boy, you know, I wouldn't mind having that. And he didn't say anything. And when the interval came and we were going to our respective dressing rooms, he just turned around and walked over to me, handed it to me and says, here, I'd like you to have that. And that's how I ended up with it. And I have it to this day. Well, it's, it's, it's really difficult to, to pick one wicket keeper out of a bunch of them because in, in the era that I played in, most of the wicket keepers were like me. They were, they were batsmen who kept wicket uh, or, or, you know, sort of ordinary wicket keepers who could bat. And um, so when it, it comes to, you know, great wicket keepers, I would, I would probably have to go before my era back in the days of um, Alan Knott, who was a great technician, uh, was in Barry as well, Said Kermani. Uh, it's difficult to pick one because they were technicians. I think as, as time went on and we got into my era and after, the, the, the quality of wicket keeping was not as good as it was in days gone by. But obviously the quality of the batting of the wicket keepers had changed. Well, I think that um, Riemann Saha has had a very good series. He looks very, very technically sound, especially up to the stumps, which is something that all Indian wicket keepers I've seen are. Um, he's shown good agility behind, behind the, the wicket. Uh, he hasn't really put too much of a foot wrong in this series. He looks, he looks a very, very good prospect, and add that to his batting. He looks as if he's someone who could play for India for a very long time. An excellent replacement for MS Dhoni.